I swear this video is about hydrofoils, but hang tight, the story starts way back with the solar plane V4. This flying wing was quite aerodynamically inefficient, but it did have a ton of solar surface area. That allowed it to fly from sun up to sun down. The next solar plane I built took this concept even further. It was a real dump truck, just terribly inefficient as far as the aerodynamics go, but there was just so much solar surface area that it produced more than enough power to be able to stay aloft in direct sun. After that build, I'd had enough of the maximal solar surface area concept, and I wanted the next solar plane to be on the other end of the spectrum. So I came up with this, the solar plane V5. It has long, narrow wings for high aerodynamic efficiency. The 3.8 meter wing could hold a total of 40 solar cells. My plan was to CNC machine the wings out of XPS insulation foam, and then laminate the solar cells onto the top. After generating all the tool paths, I fired up the old CNC machine and got to work. The usable Y-axis range of this machine is only about 900 millimeters, so in order to cut the 3.8 meter wing, I had to split it up into six sections. And these are all two-sided milling operations, complete with a channel for the spar. So yeah, this was several days of work just to make the wing cores. Step one was a facing operation, and that would give the sheet of foam a perfectly uniform thickness. Next, I switched over to a quarter inch end mill and used a parallel tool path to make the contour of the wing. After that, I flipped it over and used some steel pins embedded in the table to align with the four holes that I had previously drilled in the workpiece. That ensures the machining operations on each side line up perfectly. And then the machine goes on and does the other side, also using a parallel tool path. After machining, the pieces require a little bit of cleanup and sanding to remove the fuzz and cusps. Then it was time for assembly. I'm using a 16mm carbon fiber spar, and to conceal the spars in the wing, I machined these spar covers that fit perfectly into the slots and hug the spar. After test fitting everything, I glued it all together with Gorilla Glue, and taped the halves together and weighed it all down while the glue cured. That was just the main sections. I also machined some wing tips that got added onto the ends. So that leaves us with two really nice wing halves, but they're super delicate. The trailing edges are paper thin and can get damaged really easily, so I needed to cover the wings in something. And I also needed a way to attach the solar cells. So that brings us to these solar cell encapsulation experiments I did. Basically, the goal was to figure out the best way to fiberglass over the solar cells while leaving a nice clear and smooth surface without any air bubbles. I'm going to save all the details of this stuff for my next solar plane video, but don't hold your breath because I haven't actually started on what will become the solar plane V5 yet. From these tests, I determined that I would need to vacuum bag the wing to get the composite layup to work right. And vacuum bagging such a large and delicate foam wing without having a mold to let it cure in would be pretty risky. Here's the thing, this is a flying wing, and flying wings don't have horizontal stabilizers. Now, on a normal airplane, the horizontal stabilizer has a slightly negative angle of incidence compared to the main wing. The slight difference in angle between the main wing and the horizontal stabilizer is part of what gives the airplane dynamic pitch stability. Since flying wings don't have horizontal stabilizers, we need to build a negative angle of incidence into the wingtips. This way, the wingtips are basically doing the same job as the horizontal stabilizer on a normal airplane, and that is to create a bit of downforce in the back. So this amount of twist between the root of the wing and the wingtip needs to be super precise. And if I just stick the whole wing in a vacuum bag and leave it on the table while the resin cures, that twist is probably going to get all messed up. Another thing that would get messed up is the reflex in the airfoil. Flying wings use airfoils that kind of have a little up kick in the back, and this would also be really hard to constrain in the vacuum bag. Now I totally could have just machined some wing beds to hold these things in the perfect shape under vacuum, but for whatever reason I lost motivation and these wings just sat in the corner behind the door for three years. So that brings us to the summer of 2024. All my motivation to complete this solar plane is gone, and now I just have hydrofoils on my mind. I've been trying to learn to pump foil, and these super high aspect ratio wings like the beta foil were really catching my interest. One day I saw these old wings in the corner and thought, gee whiz, I should wrap those things in fiberglass and turn them into a hydrofoil. So that's exactly what I decided to do. I didn't expect to end up with something that I'd be able to pump foil on, but it would at the least be really interesting to play around with it at the lake and get an idea for what a ridiculously big and narrow hydrofoil would feel like. One of the big unknowns for this project was whether this thing would be stable enough on the pitch axis for me to ride. After all, the vast majority of hydrofoils out there have horizontal stabilizers, and this one doesn't since it's a flying wing. But what it does have is sweep. Sweep is the amount that the wing is angled backwards. It turns out that the distance from the wing to the horizontal stabilizer on my off-the-shelf hydrofoil is the same distance as the sweep on the big wing. So in theory, if this wing ends up having the right amount of twist, it should give enough pitch stability for a human to ride on it. I'm going to try and control the twist by using a flat sheet of carbon fiber as a wedge to lift up the trailing edge while the epoxy cures. I also decided to give the wing a lot more twist than the original solar plane design had. This is totally just a hunch. I have no clue how much twist would actually be optimal for this sort of thing. Finally, it's time for fiberglass. 
This first layer of 7.5 ounce glass is really important because it's going to sort of lock in the twist. After the epoxy cured, it was clear the wings didn't fully retain the twist from the wedge plate, but I'd have another chance to train more in with the subsequent layers of glass. The seasons are changing quickly, so we gotta hurry and finish this hydrofoil. Winter is coming, and with all the projects I do at the lake, that means five more months of cold toes. Or does it? In steps the sponsor of today's video, Bombas. Bombas swooped in to save me just in time for winter with these merino wool socks. They wick moisture away from your skin, leaving your toes warm and dry. All of Bombus's socks are made for maximal comfort, which means they're made out of the highest quality materials and there's no annoying seam in between your toes. Not only do they have amazing socks, but they also make shirts, underwear, slippers, and more. I also grabbed some of their ankle socks, which I love, and the cushion at the back saves my heels from blisters on the daily. In addition to your feet feeling good, you can also feel good about buying from Bombus because for every one pair you buy, they donate one pair to those in need. Not only do they do that with their socks, but also all the other clothing items that they offer. So far they've donated over 140 million pairs. Gift giving season is upon us, and who doesn't love receiving a pair of warm, cozy socks that last? If you want to pick up some of these socks for yourself or someone you know, head to bombus.com slash rctestflight and use code rctestflight to receive 20% off. Big thanks to Bombus for sponsoring this video. Now back to the hydrofoil build. Here's a strip of Kevlar tape going on the trailing edge. Like I said before, the foam on the trailing edge is paper thin, so I wanted to add some strength to this area. Then I laid more glass over the top of that to really lock down the Kevlar. These wings need to be strong enough to support my entire body weight. Not only that, they need to support me jumping on them, so we're going to need a lot of fiberglass. Here's the first few layers of glass on the bottom side of the wing. So much dabbing was done. And don't you dare tell me to use a fin roller, because you're wrong. Here's the amount of twist I ended up with. It was around 7 degrees, which sounds like a lot, but most of it is localized in the tip of the wing. And this thing is going to be flying super slowly, so 7 degrees is probably a good amount. After each layer of glass, I would have to sand off any protruding strands or bumps so that they don't stick through any subsequent layers of glass. I'd also rough up the cured epoxy so that the next layer adheres to it. And yes, I do know that peel ply exists. I made a cardboard stand so that the wing would sit vertically. This allowed me to more easily glass over the leading edge. The fabric drapes over that part quite easily. And then of course I wetted all that out. To get the fabric to more easily conform to the curved tips, I cut some slits in it. Look how big this thing is. It doesn't even fit on the table. For a little extra strength, I laid down some carbon fiber toe, but in hindsight that probably isn't really enough to do much. Then more glass over that, and then even more. I lost track of how many layers of fiberglass I added, but it was probably at least two on the very thinnest areas, and probably closer to eight or even more towards the root. Now we're going to switch gears a bit. I'm going for a dual mast design like the beta foil to help distribute the load across the insanely wide wingspan. The problem is, the wake foil board I'm using only has one mast attachment point in the middle, so I need to fabricate a board here to connect the two masts together, and then attach to the surfboard. Ideally, I would have just used some pre-made fiberglass sheet, but that stuff is really expensive, so I decided to try and make my own. Step one was to cut out a stencil on the CNC router, and then I started cutting fiberglass. This is some thick 1708 biaxial cloth left over from my Boston Whaler restoration. My idea was to laminate several layers of that into a super stiff plate that would be strong enough for me to stand on. Next comes the epoxy. Lots and lots of epoxy. This cloth is so thick it just drinks epoxy, and this is where the fin roller actually comes in handy. It works much better on this thick stuff. In total, I did six layers of 1708 cloth and fully wetted it all out with epoxy. Then I sandwiched it all while the epoxy cured. Yeah, okay. That did not work. There's no way I could stand on this thing. Looks like it's only 5.2 millimeters thick. So not even a quarter inch. That's why it's so flimsy. In my mind, this is what I was hoping it would turn out like. This is five millimeter thick carbon fiber plate and it is so stiff. This is four millimeter fiberglass plate and it's also super stiff, way stiffer than mine. I think the difference is that stuff like this is just made with much finer thread so that they get more glass and less resin. But in the spirit of ignoring the sunk cost fallacy, I'm gonna just keep on sinking. I decided to make a second plate and then I added a layer of foam on top of that. My plan here is to make a sandwich panel with a foam core. That'll hopefully give us the strength we need. Before gluing the two halves together, I used the CNC router to cut out the final shape. I did that to avoid needing to use a super tall end mill to cut through all 30 millimeters of the final thickness. The one complication here is that this thing is too big to fit on the CNC router, so I had to do it in two operations. I used indexing pins to keep it perfectly aligned before and after the 180 degree rotation. The epoxy ended up not sticking to the foam at all, it just peeled right off. 
So then I used a Gorilla Glue to glue all the layers together. And this is what we ended up with. It's much thicker than it could be if I would have just used off-the-shelf composite plate, but hopefully it'll work. I hear some cracking. <laughs> it ended up being probably just barely strong enough. Next, it's time to make the things that will attach the masts to the wing. For this, I'm using some 5mm carbon fiber plate. I'm using the CNC router to make some chamfers in it, as well as to cut out the contour of the parts. That worked pretty well. Those plates fit right into these 3D printed parts that I made on the Prusa XL out of PETG. I used dual extruders for this part so that I could make the support material out of PLA. Next, those two things got glued together. Forever. By the way, if you want access to this CAD design, you're in luck, because it's available at the Onshape link in the description. Onshape is a cloud-based CAD program, which means all these files live online and all you need to access them is a web browser. Click on the link in the description to sign up for a free Onshape account and then click the other link to access this model. Back to the wing. I added several more layers of fiberglass under where the masts will attach. These areas will require the most strength. I used the mast connectors to mark some drill holes for the screws that hold the masts onto the carbon plate. They don't touch the wing or the 3D print, only the carbon plate. To make sure the alignment is correct for all this stuff, I'm gluing it together while it's mostly assembled. I used a Gorilla Glue to attach the 3D prints to the wing, but don't worry, that won't be the only thing that's holding them on. I used some weights to push those down while the glue cured. The glue foamed up a bit, so I used a bent razor blade to shave the excess out of the crack. The mast bolts were trapped in there, so I used my Dremel to open up the holes a bit. Next, I used some fairing compound to make some nice fillets in between the 3D prints and the wing. Once that cured, I sanded off all the imperfections. Now it's time to add some real strength. I used CA to tack some carbon toe in place, and that got wrapped around the edge of the wing. This will hopefully prevent the mast mounts from ripping off the wing. Next, I put many layers of fiberglass over that whole area to lock everything together, and essentially make it like one big seamless piece. The wing needs to be super strong here since the masts will be putting a lot of pressure on this area. This might have been overkill, but I added a few pieces of 6 ounce carbon fiber weave as well. And the bottom of the wings got the same treatment, with some fiberglass on the top of the carbon fiber as well. As you can tell, this project is starting to get super time consuming and I was starting to second guess whether or not it was even worth it to try and resurrect these old wings. It probably would have been better to start from scratch with a design that was actually intended to be a hydrofoil. Here I'm beefing up the root of the wing so that we can have a way to connect the two halves together. We'll get to that later. With all of this composite work comes a lot of sanding. This is one of the downsides to laying composite over the top of a positive form, as opposed to using a negative mold where the surface finish comes out near perfect. I probably should have just done that to be honest, but I stuck with it and these wings were looking pretty good at this point. The surface finish was not bad, but not great due to all the fabric edges, so I smeared out some fairing compound to hopefully improve the hydrodynamics. And then of course with that comes more sanding. And then finally I added a layer of 2 ounce glass as a kind of surfacing veil. In hindsight this was probably not super necessary, but it will improve the surface finish a bit, so that's nice. It was kind of tricky to drape the cloth over the wing tip without wrinkles, but it ended up working out just fine. And the 2 ounce glass got a light sanding to finish it off. I also trimmed the trailing edge and wing tip with the sanding wheel. Now it's time to design a way to connect the two wing halves. I 3D printed some sleeves out of PETG, and these slide right over the root of the wing. I made one for each side, and those got glued together. This piece alone obviously isn't strong enough to hold the two wings together, so we're going to have to carbon fiber the crap out of it. This piece is not to permanently join the wing halves. They need to remain separate for transportation, so this piece is the only thing holding them together. For that reason, it needs to be really strong. Technically, I guess you could say the masts are also holding the wings together, but they are so thin that they don't give much lateral strength. So this piece has to be quite strong. I added some fiberglass over the carbon fiber so that I wouldn't have to sand into the carbon as much. I also wrapped the trailing edge in several layers of carbon, and then some fiberglass over that. I still wasn't entirely convinced that this thing would be strong enough to resist splitting apart, so I wrapped the edges in carbon fiber toe, and I used some CA glue to tack them in place before wetting it out with epoxy. And wetting it out with epoxy is what I did next. Once the epoxy cured, I gave it a quick sanding and then painted it. I also painted the entire wings. This is one part polyurethane boat paint. This stuff must have been expired or something because it took forever to cure. I glued some 3D printed edges on my deck here to make it a little more hydrodynamic. <laughs> it's so big. Man, I can't wait to take this thing to the water. I ended up chopping the masts down to 70 centimeters from 90 centimeters so that it was as tall as my other foil board. I also had to tap new threads in those. So that completes the build. Now it's off to the lake. The first try, I'm just gonna jump onto my stomach because there's no way I'm gonna be able to get on my feet on this thing. <laughs> Look at that! Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like almost neutrally buoyant. The wings are foam core, so there's definitely some air in there. Okay, well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Dude, that's gonna work. It might work. Whoa! That's so promising. Dude, that's sick. There's yeah. so much lift. You just gotta get for like try to just nose dive it on this time. I felt it too. Yeah. Like it feels like it has way more lift than the slingshot foil. Whoa! I can feel my shoulder just dislocate. Oh shit. Yeah, it went back in though, luckily. Ooh, yeah, that was unpleasant. <laughs> it went and it stopped and it started to fly backwards. It's got too much lift, it won't go down. Well, <laughs> too far forward. But I mean, that tells us there is a balance point. Wow, it's so hard to drag through the water like this. Woo! Ah. Woo! 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 <laughs> yeah! Wow, yeah, it pitches up pretty hard. There's so much twist in the wing that when I just push it through the water like that, I can feel it trying to pitch up. So with this normal foil, I'm obviously able to go much further than I did with the big white wing, but that's because I'm jumping onto it with more momentum and then pumping. If I were to have just jumped out onto my stomach on the normal foil, I would have not gone as far as I did with the big white wing. I think it's safe to say that the white wing has a much better glide ratio, so I'm really excited to see if I can ride it while being towed by Toby the towboat. But that will have to wait until the next video, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, bye.